Welcome to What's the 4 and one your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Onika McLean. And I'm Sydney Wayman. Courtney Vashon is off tonight. So students at the University of Texas at San Antonio can sign up for a class called, get this y'all, Black Women, Beyonce, and Popular Culture. Ew. Students who take the course will spend a semester exploring the singer's visual album, oh, oh, Lemonade. Oh, 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 lemonade. Oh, lemonade. Oh, lemonade. Uh-huh. Oh, and so it's really Sorry. and its relationship to black feminism. <laughs> it was 50 years ago when Stokely Carmichael, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, introduced the slogan, Black Power. Mm -hmm. The Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture in Harlem is celebrating a year-long exhibit and with events to commemorate the Black Power movement. The Black Power 50 exhibit and programs run through June 2017. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So here's a lifestyle story for all you travelers. Maven, a car, a Maven, a car sharing offered uh, by General Motors, mm -hmm. has begun rolling out a one-way car sharing service where um, the members in Ann Arbor and Detroit letting users take the car one way. Right? Oh, nice. So that, that's kind of like good, right? So it's from Ann Arbor to the University of Michi Michigan and then be then between Detroit and the Detroit uh, Metro Airport. The, it's only a matter of time before this feature is nationwide. That's wow. very nice. Mm. Okay, so for all you naysayers out there, pop star Janet Jackson is actually pregnant and she has the pictures to prove it. Yes. I saw her. So Janet Jackson is 50 years old, y'all, and wow. is expecting her first child with husband, Wiesam Almana. A source told E! News that, quote, Janet isn't feeling that great. She's gained more weight than she anticipated. It hasn't been the easiest pregnancy at all. She's excited to have her baby, and that's the light at the end of the tunnel, close quote. So we wish Janet Jackson a more comfortable pregnancy and pray that the baby is healthy. It's yeah. going to be a big baby, probably. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes. So now we're just going to get right into what's popping. So like you said earlier, Kim Kardashian was rab robbed in Paris. So she was held up at gunpoint by two armed masked men dressed as police officers. Crazy. And as she stayed in an apartment Kanye owns in Paris. Now, a total of five. There were a total of five fake police officers involved. Wait, wait it wasn't in a, a, a boutique hotel? No, it wasn't in an apartment. That's what Kanye... The, but the story keeps changing. Sorry. This is, this is the latest story. Okay. Kanye okay. owns this, this apartment in, in Paris. And a total of five fake police officers participated in the robbery. So what they did was they handcuffed the night watchman downstairs and forced him to tell them where she was. And, yeah, and then, um, yeah, then, then he got her, handcuffed her, threw her in the bathroom, and they stole, like, millions of dollars in jewelry. Ten million. Some people even it's say kind of ten million though. dollars in jewelry. I mean, well, I, why, why would she carry that much jewelry around with her? And to me, it sounds like an inside job, really. I she mean, was Kardashian. True, uh, but the thing is, what people are saying is, why did she post just an hour before they they busted in? She had a post. I don't know whether it was on Instagram or what, where she was lounging in her house, like in her robe, and people are saying wearing people who the good jewelry. I don't know if she was wearing the jewelry. I mean, that's no. the thing. How but they, they but they know, know she that. Had the jewelry. But yeah. they he know that. She just bought her a really really uh, expensive uh, ring, right? It was and like she $4 posted million that on social 4. media. Five million dollar ring. So that's why. But why wouldn't she? Posted on social media, her whole life is, is on, social But that's media. the point. That's what people are saying. People who are like, listen, you are basically giving people a green light to come into your house if you are literally posting your day by day movements. An hour before, you're like, yeah, I'm home lounging. They're like, oh, great time to come in there and get your stuff. But they like, don't know so that people her are stuff like, will be there. That's the apartment. They Kanye would know because in remember, Paris. why would she, they know she had the jewelry? Because it's she an was inside job. It has no, to be. she was in Paris. She was in Paris for. Uh, um, Paris Fashion Week, I and she posted it that same week. But so but they knew that it was. But how would they know no, she, she would have ten million dollars worth of jewelry? She's with a Kardashian. Okay, so, where, so where would she have it? Where would she? Where would she take it? Dumb Dashian. She a dumb Dashian. Oh Lord, Lord it's coming for the Kardashians. I don't know. I mean, I'm not doing. coming for the Kardashians, but come on, it it, it just sounds so strange Wait, what do you, to me. What do you think about my makeup? Your makeup? Are you wearing makeup? Oh, you look <laughs> ah. I'm like, 
how Alicia Keys I am. <laughs> oh, oh, I see this. So I like Alicia that. Alicia Keys is a coach <laughs> on The Voice, right? And you, she is standing by her no makeup campaign. Luckily, she's kind of flawless. Sometimes she needs to drink some more water because it's like a little dark back here. But whatever. So what do you guys <laughs> think this about this no makeup trend? What's no, I on? said it when, when she first came out with it. I think it's a good thing. If she doesn't want to wear makeup, why should she be forced to wear makeup? But and she, she actually has really nice skin. But so it's not that's forced. Something. Like, I mean, I no. just want, don't want to see it. I, no, no, no. But I'm saying like. Like herself, like I think that everybody should have the right to do what they want. So if you want to wear makeup, I want to wear makeup because I do. You can do that, but why yeah. should she just because she's in the public eye feel like oh I'm obligated she to wear come makeup? Missing because one of so. the Maybelline is gonna put a head out of ass. <laughs> you better yeah. stop playing. <laughs> Listen, stop playing she gonna be all right. I like okay. her. I like Alicia mm -hmm. Keys doing her thing. I think it's a good thing actually. I mean, too for too long women have been feeling that they have to wear that stuff, and a lot of them don't. So why? You know, I, agree. I actually agree with Sydney for once. It's cute. I you like might be it. right for once. Because I want red lips want and rosy well, cheeks. Well, you know what? Speaking of <laughs> rosy cheeks and red lips, <laughs> <laughs> did you know Snapchat changed its name to Snap Inc.? Oh. And it's calling okay. itself a camera company. You know what right? Snapchat is? No, what's Snapchat? Oh, okay. Cause now, Snap. Hey. Oh, you don't know, right? I didn't know they had that in the 60s. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> mm -hmm. What are you <laughs> Snap just <doesn't> introduced <laughs> spectacles. <laughs> A uh, $130 eyeglass designed to let you record 10 seconds of video at a time and sync it to your uh, phone to post on Snapchat. So I ask you, yeah. when are you buying yours? I'm not buying, I don't even have Snapchat. <laughs> I, don't even know how to, I don't know why I need to have a 10 minute video that it's not 10, 10 seconds. Minutes, 10 10 seconds. Seconds. So well, first they said that Snapchat didn't save those videos, but I work in the law industry and all of that is discoverable, so it's yeah. not deleted. Snapchat holds it on their server, so all that snap sex that you're doing, oh you need Lord. to snap and cut snap. it out. Let me snap it out. Snap Let it me out. ask you this. Um, you do Facebook Live? Yeah. Do they destroy that? Or? No, no. Oh, okay. That's all discoverable. So your, your, yeah. issue, your issue is only that Snapchat had made the comment that they erase it. Right. Yeah, that's so the no, illusion no, no, no. of... That's the like, illusion it, of Snapchat. Yeah. That's why all the kids use it. So they're like, let me watch my Snap live. Think about it. Your parents can't find out, but the cops totally can. It's just a And get it back, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Scary. So... Singer Mary J. Blige recorded a commotion, a commercial to promote um, her support for Hillary Clinton. Okay, and her new what app was it, her, was, it, was, it, was, it, was it her support or she was just like no, it's her support. Was it, was it, you know, like everybody's kind of like I'm with her, I'm with her. So look at the face though. She's so, good. Why she you know, you don't I like have support. A, I can have a political view. No, well, I'm sorry. do you have one? Well, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Mary J. Blige and her <laughs> interview with Democratic political candidate Hillary Clinton serenading <laughs> Hillary Clinton with a song about police violence. The Twitterverse went berserk. Mm -hmm. you? They, they were not happy with all jokes and memes about it. So when Mary J. Blige <laughs> heard about this, Mary J. Blige with her yonkers ass was like, wait a minute, F y'all, hey, this boop, boop, boop. <laughs> this what he did. He said, boop, 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 too. She did all of that. Crabs in the barrel, you simple-minded simple bastards. I put the bastard in. She didn't say that part. She said, simple-minded. Simple Hashtag, what's the 411? Hashtag 411. <laughs> I keep saying, what's the 411? Yeah, I'm easy. sorry. It's, it's been ingrained in my brain to say, what's the 411? <laughs> exactly. But at this point, Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy-saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. Welcome back to What's the 4 and one Hello, ladies. Hello. Hello. So tell us what's going on in What's the 4 and one TV social media world. Yes, so summer is officially over, and Libra season has rolled in, and we have a bunch of celebrity shout-outs, celebrity birthday shout-outs to give. Start with me. So, oh, <laughs> happy birthday, Onika, by the way. Yes. Also, yes. Onika and Sydney Wayne's <laughs> birthday. But um, shout-out to Lisa Ray. She's celebrating her 50th birthday. Wow. She I saw her. She's amazing. Amazing. Yes. Beautiful. Oh also, shout out to actor Will Smith, who's celebrating his 48th birthday. Nice. Another gorgeous looking man. Yeah. And, <laughs> and shout out to NBA basketballer Kevin Durant, celebrating his 28th birthday. Kevin nice. Durant is only 28. Only 28. Yeah. Oh, it's trying to holler. Yeah. You could be a cool girl. No, no. I'm a Thundercat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for wishing um, 
these people a happy birthday with us and thank you for commenting on the instagram post so we just wanted to give a shout out to the people who've been commenting thank you to vdog39 choo chewy and cry lebron cry, <laughs> cry, LeBron, cry. <laughs> yes and speaking of shout outs also we got to give a shout out to kevin hart we just yeah. found out this week that he is the highest paid comedian in the world yes, beating yes. out jerry seinfeld which is a big big deal wow big, big deal. that's amazing he's that's a hard working brother yes he is, he is. Mm -hmm. Yes. That man never stops working. I mean, like, so many of you guys are commenting on that post, and we wanted to shout you guys out, too. Thank you so much, Marcel Ronza. She says she's a huge Kevin Hart fan, and she wants her to wish him a happy birthday Aww. with us. Yes. <laughs> so, as usual, guys, keep those comments coming at What's the 411 TV on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and we might shout you out next time. Yes, uh, thank you, ladies. Thank yes, you. keep those comments coming. The average tax takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Von Roberson, and welcome back to What's the 411. I'm here now with two actors from August Wilson's amazing play, Two Trains Running. I have over here Douglas Wade, who uh, plays Holloway in the play. He's the best friend of Memphis, played by actor Sean Turner. And Memphis is, I guess, the key character who owns the Memphis restaurant? Yeah, it all okay. takes place inside my restaurant, the whole play. And so Memphis is the uh, kind of uh, the owner, the proprietor. So he kind of holds court, if you will. So he's like, you remember the Jeffersons, how George Jefferson yes. was? He let you know Definitely. that he was in charge. Definitely. That's kind of how Memphis mm -hmm. is. You okay. know what I mean? He runs things. And he, he's in the process of selling his building to the city. But the city has to meet his price. Wow. He has a certain demands that he won't be undersold. They have to respect him as a businessman wow. and take him seriously. So... Memphis is self-made. He doesn't have much formal education, but yet he has an impeccable logic, as uh, Mr. Wilson put it in the play. So he's uh, he's self-made, but he's not dumb. Right, he's exactly. He's a very smart man. Exactly. He's a businessman who made his way up from the bottom. So exactly. And there's another. There's a story, sort of the beginning of Memphis, hmm. about where he came from, yeah. how he came to right. be yeah. in Pittsburgh sure. at the Memphis yeah. restaurant. I think that's really good. That. August Wilson had that vision. Oh, yeah, yeah. August gives his characters uh, a full story, a full life, a 360-degree life of where they came from, why they're here, what motivated them to make this transition to Pittsburgh. Memphis was like so many black people in the uh, 30s and the 40s. He kind of ran from segregation and humiliation up to Pittsburgh. Well, the Klan chased him out? Yeah, the Klan ch chased him out after he acquired some property that the Klan thought was worthless that he found water on and created a crop and created a life for himself. And after they saw it, they said, no, no, you can't have it. You don't deserve that, boy. You need to go either go someplace else or give us that land back. And they eventually took the land back. But Memphis is determined to go back to Jackson and get his land back. Wow. So he's wow. a very focused individual, let's say. So do you think August Wilson may be playing with something? Because it is all about land in Mississippi. Sure. And it's again about land with yeah. Memphis Restaurant. Yeah. In Mississippi, the Klan chases them away. Here, gentrification and the Pittsburgh of city course, officials. Of course. And it's, it's about us always kind of not really being settled or not having security mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. we deserve or always being mm -hmm. chased mm -hmm. around, not having exactly. the economic foundation mm -hmm. to hold on to what we have. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's but a, it turns out that that's true about the oppression and the violence against us mm -hmm. and the usurpation of our rights. It's also true that we have some powers, and that's the brilliance of August Wilson, yes, right? Yes, yeah, of course. So let's talk about some of that power. Well, the, the power that Memphis has, of course, is the uh, he, has, he has the community backing. You know, the, the fact that the community kind of comes to his restaurant and meets and shares. Mm -hmm. And so they, 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 they've created a family, a support system for one another, even though 
each person's going through their own trials and tribulations. They know that they're not alone. They know that I that I have Holloway's back yeah. and Holloway yeah. has my yeah. back yeah. and we have Wolf's back and uh, we have Sterling's, Sterling's back Sterling. and mm-hmm. you know we all kind of look out for one another. Even right. though we may argue and fuss and fight and get into different types of skirmishes and disagreements yeah. that are brought out through the play, mm-hmm. but as far as caring for one another, Mr. Mm-hmm. Wilson creates a beautiful environment yes. for us to exist yes. in. Yes, and the power of that support. Yeah. And of people that you talk about in particular, oh, Aunt yeah. Esther. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about <laughs> Aunt Esther. Well, you know, Aunt, Aunt Esther is a, a character you don't see, but uh, she is that spiritual uh, mm-hmm. guidance for a lot of people in the community. Somewhat, uh, there's another character, Prophet Samuel. There's another one that oh, passed, wow. Patchnet Red. So Holloway is, uh, is almost a historian on all of these characters. He mm. knows them well, and he recounts them throughout the play. Different, oh. uh, you know, d- different notes that he gives all of the characters or the oh. audience really about uh, who Honester is, uh, mm. who was Patchneck Red, you know, mm. talking about his funeral, mm. and uh, and those different characters that's not seen, uh, mm-hmm. but talked about Lutz mm-hmm. and uh, Melon. These mm. these are characters that are, and the one thing about. Uh, that we all know about August is that some of his characters come back in other plays. Ah. You know, you'll hear Mellon's character in, the, mm-hmm. in Piano Lesson, mm-hmm. you know, Stovall. You'll, mm-hmm. you'll hear these different mm-hmm. characters. Mm-hmm. So it's truly a community that yeah. he just takes and he goes from one to the yeah. next to the next in each play. You, you hear different stories. Yes, about those and characters. as we've been saying, so on yeah. the one hand, there is mm-hmm. the constant assault. Correct. and robbery and Correct. oppression and violence against yeah. black bodies, black property, That's black uh, psyches. Correct. But at the same time, we also get to show, August Wilson shows that we also have power Correct. through community Correct. and through the oral tradition and calling upon people like from our descendants and from our past, the spirits and power mm-hmm. of those people. Mm-hmm. Wow, mm-hmm. wow. So, the... Uh, the Black Spectrum Theater Company wow. is producing it. Let's oh, yeah. hear a little bit about what, you know, those two coming together. What yeah, well, I mean, I'm a St. Albans native, uh, oh. so uh, Black Spectrum is home to me. Oh. Coming to perform there is always a, a joy. I've done a number of plays uh, at Black Spectrum. Uh, Carl mentioned Bet Howard, who is mm-hmm. the resident director, mm-hmm. is a mentor. Oh. Um, uh, I started with Black Spectrum somewhere back in the 90s. I want to be too old here. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, uh, first play I did was called The Blacks by Jean Genet. Ah, and yes. uh, done a number of plays. Uh, piano Lesson. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually did uh, uh, Gabriel in Fences there. Mm. And, um, so I've done a number of plays with Black Spectrum. It, it, it truly is a, a, a great mm-hmm. place, mm-hmm. you know, to, to hone your skills mm-hmm. uh, for young and for those right. who are experienced right. and have studied. Right. So it's always a pleasure uh, having performed in Timeless, uh, ah. Big Carl's piece that he wrote. Actually, the that two of us. That is so timely, timely. Yeah. <laughs> also, the, actually, the two of us, we played detectives oh, wow. in, in, that, in that show. Uh-huh. We, yeah, we, we just had a ball. Yeah. We just had a ball. So, and... Um, what was the other? Smell the power. Yeah. Where yeah. We, we actually played brothers. Yeah. We actually uh, played brothers. Uh, so yeah. we have a great chemistry, a great camaraderie. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. we did uh, fences mm-hmm. where I, I did Troy. He did Bono. Mm-hmm. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we just. Yeah. You know. As you're talking, I'm thinking that the um, the Black Spectrum Theater Company is training as well as supporting and oh, yeah. building oh, yeah. community. And I remember when I was talking with. Um, with uh, Carl Clay, the founder and executive producer of Black Spectrum Theater. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think I'm going to call him an arts activist. An arts activist <laughs> okay, is what I'm going to name. call him. That's a yeah. great name for yeah. It's just a place where our, our stories are allowed to live yes. and, 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 and are given life on stage. Yes. Yeah. When, when you look on the stage of Black Spectrum, you see children, you see adults, mm. but you also see the, the full breadth of the black experience mm. expressed artistically. Mm. So it's, it's a wonderful community resource, mm. a place to, as Doug said, to learn, to mm-hmm. live, and to grow as an artist. Mm-hmm. Two trains running uh, November 4th through November 20th. So you go out and see this and have fun. And thanks so much for joining us here at What's the 411. I'm LaVon Roberson, and I'll see you. Thanks so much to our guests. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. We'll be there seeing you. We will not miss it. We look forward to it. Yeah, great. All right. Aunt Esther will definitely. (laughs) We'll we'll, we'll introduce you to Aunt Esther. (laughs) I bet you will. Thanks again, and good night. 
you're looking to start a business or you just like looking at beautiful things, you want to keep it locked for our next guest. She is millennial apparel designer Lisette Folks. Yeah, keep it locked. Keep it locked. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. The average tax takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts, stop the wrecks. I'm happy to introduce today's guest. She's a millennial apparel designer who is proud of her Caribbean heritage, and her pieces are designed to bring joy, confidence, and beauty to everyone who wears them. Welcome, Lizette Folks. Hi. So I feel kind of like this is a special edition of kind of Caribbean cookup. Because okay. you are representing not just one, but two islands, yes. Jamaica and Puerto Rico. So how is it that your background kind of influenced your design? Um, my background definitely influenced my designs because I find, you know, different things from my culture. So it could be color, print, texture, food, um, music, and I definitely incorporate all those things into my designs to make it fun, light, and energetic. Right. So how is it that you decided to become a designer? What was it that inspired you? Um, I was inspired by definitely my surroundings. Um, when I was growing up, I had a lot of different people in my life that brought the arts and music and um, performance arts. And I met someone when I was younger who did jewelry designing and she had her own shop. And it really inspired me to see someone do what they love and make a profit off of it. And um, she still has a store now in downtown Brooklyn. And it definitely was an inspiration for me to kind of see how I could do it myself. Okay. So you started doing jewelry designing at a really young age. Like yes. 14. Yes. I started, she was my inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I started at 14 and I took um, classes to see how I could do it on my own, um, put my own spin on it. Um, it was definitely a learning experience because okay. I was trying to find my creative voice um, by seeing what she did, mm -hmm. but it definitely was giving me the opportunity to grow and expand and take what she did and kind of incorporate it into my lifestyle and what I wanted to create. But she, was, she definitely showed me a way to make that happen. Right. So you were talking we were talking earlier about how it was kind of challenging when you told your parents, like, hey, I'm gonna be this designer. So what did they want you to be? And how did you uh, well that? my mom, she definitely wanted me to get a secure job and my aunts, they're all teachers and principals. So it was that path was set forth for me. And I love kids and I love teaching, um, but I knew that I wanted to do something different mm -hmm. and I wanted to express my creative voice, um, whether it was through singing, dance, art, performance, but I had to find a way to incorporate all those things right. that I loved, painting um, and you know, fashion and design was what drew me towards that. Right. You've actually done some really like interesting things. You were working for Tracy Reese for a period of time. What was that experience like and how did that help you when you decided to make yeah, the leap? I worked for a few, um, well three women entrepreneurs and it's definitely taught me um, with through high school and up to Tracy Reese how to be a, a woman and just start your own business and how you can sustain it and how you have children and other responsibilities um, within your life. So. All three women have definitely showed me um, how that's possible and have put me under their wing to kind of guide me towards that direction. With Tracy Reese, um, we definitely worked a lot with collections okay. and um, runway, and I helped design a lot of accessories there. So in my time working with her, mm -hmm. I was able to come back to the fact that I love accessories, that I love right. creating jewelry. Um, You're wearing it right now. Yes, Mine's very I'm nice. wearing a pair of my earrings from this first collection that I've made. Um, and it definitely gave me the opportunity to express myself through her to say, you know, this is something that I could do on my own. Nice. And so you have now made the leap from working exclusively for someone else into your own company. So talk about Jan and Rico. Yes, well, Jam & Rico just started um, this past June. Um, 
officially. It was nice. Very nice. Thank you. It was a process, a loving process for a <laughs> while to definitely figure out what I wanted for myself um, after designing for others and seeing what I'd be able to um, create on my own mm -hmm. and where I was going to find my inspiration. Um, what I was going to design mm -hmm. and what people would be interested in purchasing. I know I, what I want to wear, but right. to design for an audience that was um, accepting of what I liked was what it was a challenge. So it was a loving process and in June we had a launch party and mm -hmm. we were able to sell to family and friends and right. we've been growing since then. Right, you went SS block party, you sold stuff there, that yeah, was really nice. it was amazing. That was a really great experience. Essence was a great partner mm -hmm. and they welcomed us and we were able to sell to a, an audience that I couldn't imagine and we made a, um, a lot of connections there and I was excited to do more festivals and events like that to kind of bring people to us so they can get to know us and more. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, you're relatively young in your business and all of that, but what is some of your advice you'd give to someone who's like, I don't know if I should take the leap, I'm not sure what I should do. If they want to get into designing, what, what would you say they should do? Um, well, get into designing, um, I definitely feel like it's not as difficult as it might seem. Um, internships are always helpful. I'm tired of a lot of them. And uh -huh. you definitely right. have to make your connections. Um, but for business, I believe that if you have something in your heart that you want to express mm -hmm. and you want to have your voice out there like I did, um, you just have to find what is passionate for you or what drives you to do that. And once you have that passion behind the force of what you want to create, Yes, well, that's awesome. Such good <laughs> advice, real good advice. So, uh, what what's next for you? So, you're doing. You came from apparel. You're doing jewelry now. Are you going to do apparel next? Like, what's what's next? Uh, I would love to go back to apparel. Mm -hmm. What I think draws me to accessories is the fact that any body type can wear um, accessories. So, the the fit doesn't have to be as precise um, as apparel does. But I mean, I have a photo shoot and whose clothes am I going to put on them? I want to put my clothes <laughs> right, right, right. on my models. So eventually I would love to go back into apparel and have that voice of the Caribbean spirit. And yes, make Caribbean beautiful girl magic, clothes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would definitely love that and do beautiful, colorful prints. Like, it's definitely in my brain. Right. Um, and I think once I get comfortable in accessories and you know get my voice out there, then I can put that out as well. Put more out. Okay, so where can they find your beautiful jewelry? Where can they um, You purchase? can go to uh, jamandrico.com. It's www.jamandrico.com. Um, you can purchase uh, my first collection, which is up there now. And you can also go um, to Instagram at jamandrico.com also. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is you. great. And we will be right back. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Well, that will do it for this week's edition of What's the 4 in 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. Until next week, check out our website, www.whatsthe411.com. And remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 411 TV. Y yes, please check us out, and we just might mention you on the show. I'm Kissy Cox, and on behalf of Onika McLean and Sydney Wayman, thank you for watching What's the 411. We will see you next time. Who's got the 411? 411, they got the 411.